Here's cypress trees apparently. Either being grown that way or molded somehow that way. Like a bonsai, I don't know which. But by keeping the branches low, it created maximum shade, I would suspect. I would think that an emperor, depending upon how he lived or was forced to live, might find it very, very comforting to abdicate and thus retire so that he could then do with his life as he wished. Because I suspect that no matter how powerful he was, a great deal of his life may have been spent in uh, rigmarole. Here are lion and lioness and the obligatory center carriage path up to the residence. So how much fun could it be? living in a place of almost solid stone and wood. Imperial seals. So it's called a table plaque. Probably like we would have photographs on our bureau. Carved from rose quartz. This is called a gold calabash box. I never heard of the word calabash except when uh, Jimmy Durante said, Good night, Mrs. Calabash. I think that's what he said. <laughs> this is yellow jade. I didn't know jade came in a yellow color. Exquisite and intricately carved. Gold. Open floral work. And I don't know what the jewels are. Some kinds of gems. Interesting that it's in a heart shape. Was it intention to be romantic like in the Western cultures? If that's the natural color of jade, it's interesting how the artist, at least if he intentioned it, to use that brown color for the horns. We're used to seeing jade in the polished stone of the Navajo nodding in what look like elegant, flowing, carved flower designs. This is crystal, so I assume it's blown of glass. These are snuff bottles. I don't know whether we cast this habit on the Chinese or they came across it on their own. I wonder if this is a way we can say we glorify vice. I do wonder how they would hollow out these little vessels. So this is a creamy gray jade um, encrusted with inlaid gems. These are hat finials and as they went on the top of something. Gold inlaid with gems and pearls. This is a silver necklace with coral inlaid.
decorative little neck pendants. Jade. These are gold hair pieces. I don't know whether they're wrapped or whether you say gold hair cross piece, whatever that is. They look solid and they are and flat. And these are jade. Hmm. This is tourmaline decorated with squirrel and grape, although I don't see the squirrel unless there's a little animals around the side are squirrels. These are recognized as gold and jade hairpins with um, gems embedded in them. And all to decorate the emperor's concubines and yet they become evidence of the stature and quality and creativity of the Chinese at various eras in their history. So even my cynicism is dampened somewhat by the ultimate benefit of evidence for the Chinese and the world. Beautiful work. One can imagine how excited she would be if she received these from the prince or from the emperor himself and then took to wearing it so he would know if she prized it. This is a phoenix crown. Can't be worn, it'd be too incredibly heavy, I would think. Nope. One of the Emperor Wan Lee's Empress. And that dates from 1573. These are earrings or eardrops. <laughs> Look at the intricacy of this one, a little bug or insect of some sort. This an array of birds, probably of gold with pearl, but each of them flying downward almost, although there's a stack of them going towards us. There's another beautiful hat. Yeah. Of jade, I think, maybe now. Gold. Oh, that dates from 1644 to 1911. Hmm, that's an interesting time span. This is a platinum ring, says 1644 to 1911. Um, strangely large expanse of time. I wonder when we learn to work with titanium. These are sapphires. Platinum ring with sapphire. What's interesting here is the intricacy of the work. I don't know what this is for. I think it's a belt. You see a hook on this fitting here, and over there a loop where that might fit. But look at the intricacy of whatever this is for. A change purse, snuff, who knows. And then what is that little device for? Turn the rain belt buckle. Here I'll pan around just so you can see the deeper inside area of Qinglong's residence after abdication. From my vantage point, one would think where I am, per I would envy the poets who lived in the mountains in a semi-state of asceticism like a monk, and still deeper. Of course, some of the emperors, like the uh, emperors from the north, I um, can't remember what they were called now, I don't think it was Turkic, but something else, um, had Shendei, north east of Beijing, up in the mountains, because it reflected their uh, Manchurian um, hilly mountainous forested areas and they could retreat there not only from the heat of Beijing but to an environment more friendly to their heritage. <laughs>